three principles. Listen to great jazz, copy it, and play it together with your friends. That is how every great jazz musician learned to become great. Everything else is just details. There's really only one way to learn jazz and that is by listening and copying the masters that came before you. If you listen all day to jazz, you will become a great jazz musician. That's rule number one. <laughs> My not speaking any language was actually a help for me to learn some jazz language. But the important thing was that I didn't know what scale to play. I didn't know what chords to play. All I could do was just sing the melodies that I heard the guys playing on my cassette. And luckily my teacher said, that's how you do it. That's right. That, do that. Don't. Don't listen to those other guys. Listen to Red Garland, listen to Miles Davis, listen to these guys. Don't listen to your friends. That's, that's the real language. I learned from this guy the right way to learn, and I eventually got better by putting this method into practice. The third thing I just mentioned, if you listen and you copy and then you play together with other people, you're going to be great. If you don't do any one of those things, you're not going to become great. If you, spend, if you skip the third part, playing with people, because you feel like you're not ready, you're nervous, you don't sound good enough yet, you want to wait until you're better to play with other people, you'll never get better. You can't wait. You have to be like I was when I was 14, I didn't know anything, and just speak whatever little words you know, and listen. And that's necessary. You can't skip that process. You can't become great just in a practice room. You have to speak together with others. Jazz has both kinds of rules. Jazz has rules that you really should not break because the jazz police will come and they arrest you. <laughs> and then there's rules that no one will arrest you for, but they're kind of more like good principles, good moral principle. So this band, in my opinion, considering it's a new band that never played together before, for the most part, they followed some good moral principles and they didn't break too many rules. But more important, they had fun. And within the structure of the song, which is also a kind of rule that they were following, they enjoyed themselves, they expressed themselves, they told a story, and they were free. And they gave us that feeling of anything is possible. Without drums. So first, most of the credit needs to go to Mr. Bass Player, because... <laughs> What's the name? What's the name? Ludovigo. Ludovigo, right. So Ludovigo, he gave a really solid, nice swinging feeling with a good sound, big sound, good sound, without drums and without amplification also, right? Just by pulling the bass. And he supported the rest of the band. 
it's important to know that as a bass player, you have more responsibility than anybody else. You have a responsibility for the time, the feel, the sound, and also the form. And the form was the only thing that suffered. You did a great job with providing the correct roots. The other thing that he did that I really liked, that I want to compliment you on, a lot of bass players are always trying to show how hip they are, how creative they can be harmonically with their bass lines and still be correct. Now that's great if you're Ron Carter and you, you play like that, I say, wow. But in your case, at, at your level, you did exactly the right thing. You just repeated the good notes. And when you listen to bass players, even on the original recording of Take the A-Train, you'll hear them. They love to repeat notes. Bass players can repeat roots and fifths and thirds. Great. And it sounded perfect. The real work is the work that you guys have to do. Listening, copying, and playing together.